Hey, happy Halloween. Um, remember, your only homework tonight is to watch this video and turn it in, okay? We're going to go ahead and get started right away. Remember, we're talking about proportional relationships, okay? We want to know if something is proportional or not. For something to be proportional, something to be proportional, it's got to be the same, what? All the way across the board, it's got to have the same unit rate, okay? So, for example, if we've got something that says, like, uh, there's 20 students in one class, okay? And then my first and second periods have 40 students total. So that'd be 40 students in two classes. Uh, my first three periods have 60 students total. 60 students in three classes. And then my first four periods have 80 students total. 80 students in four periods. Okay, we've got to find the unit rate students per class and see if they are all the same. These are written as ratios, right? We've got to find, are these ratios equivalent? So we got 20 students per one, that does not change. 40 per two would still be 20 students per one class. 60 per three would still divide into 20 students per class. And 80 over four would still divide into 20 per one class. 20 students per one class. So that means that it is proportional because all of them equaled 20. What is your constant of proportionality in that example? Constant of proportionality. Remember, constant of proportionality is that, that unit rate that they all equal. And if they are all equal and they are proportional, then the constant of proportionality in that case would be 20, right? 20 students per class. Okay? We can also look at this on a graph. So if we labeled classes down here, students on the y okay we can make an x and a y chart for this all right so when we had one class we had 20 students when we had two classes we had 40 students when we had three classes we had 60 students when we had four classes we had 80 students okay so if we had zero classes we'd be at zero students okay one class, two classes, three classes, four classes, five classes. Okay, and we can go up by 20s here because that's what the students go up by. Okay, so in one class, when x equals 1, the students is 20. For two classes, we've got 40. Three classes, we've got 60. Four, we've got 80. Five, we have a hundred. Now we gotta look graphically. Is this a proportional relationship? Well, it better be if it was proportional when we found the unit rate. And if you connect all those dots, it is. Why? There's two reasons. Remember, two reasons something is proportional on a graph. Goes through the origin. That's the first thing. Second thing, linear. If it is linear, that's another word for meaning it's a straight line. And in this case, it is a straight line that does pass through the origin, so it is proportional. Okay? Now, this last dot we made, we don't know, but we can find any number of classes with this graph. We can also find any number of classes with that unit rate, 20 per class. Okay? So if we came all the way over here, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, we know these go up by 20s, right? It's going to hit right here on that graph, right? The 10 is going to hit right here. So we go up by 20s over here, 120, 140, 160, 180, 200. And in 10 classes, we would have 200 students. Okay, now if you wrote that, 200 students per 10 classes, and you divide 200 by 10 because a fraction is just a division problem, 
And this is also the ratio, 200 students to 10 classes, 200 divided by 10 equals the same unit rate we started with, 20 students per class, right? Okay, so that's how proportional relationships work. An example of something that's not proportional, okay, would be something like, we had a lot of examples where they said an age, like this guy's always five years older than the other guy, so... We'll just make up person number one, person number two. Or actually, we'll do person A and person B. Okay? Adam and Bob. There you go. A and B. Okay? And Bob's always three years older than Adam. So when Bob, when Adam was born, when Adam was zero years old, Bob was three. When Adam was one, Bob was four. When Adam was two, Bob was uh, five, sorry. When Adam was three, Bob was six. When Adam was four, Bob was seven. Okay, he's always three years older, no matter what. That's not going to change, right? Well, if we graph this and we put Adam down here, Bob up here. When Adam was zero... Bob was three. Right? When Adam was one, Bob was four. When Adam was two, Bob was five. When Adam was three, Bob was six. When Adam was four, Bob was seven. Okay? And then we trace these lines. We connect all these lines. All right, so now we got to look, is this proportional when we look at it on a graph? Well, does it, is it a straight line first off? Yes, it is. Does it pass through the origin? No, it does not. So is it proportional? No, because it does not pass through the origin. It does not pass through zero, zero, right? Okay, now if you wanted to look at a unit rate for this or a ratio, we could set the ratio. It doesn't matter. you got to set Adam over Bob or Bob over Adam. It doesn't matter. You just have to come up with the same ratio every time. It's got to reduce to the same thing. Okay? So when we'll do Bob and Adam. Bob over Adam. Bob to Adam. When Bob was four, Adam was one. When Bob was five, Adam was two. When Bob was six, Adam was three. When Bob was seven, Adam was four. Well, 4 over 1 just equals 4. Okay, so all of these have to equal that same unit rate. Okay, 6 over 3 we know equals 2. 5 over 2 is 2 and a half. 7 over 4 is 1 and 3 fourths. We do not have the same unit rates here. We do not have the same equivalent ratios. If the ratios are not equivalent, this would be not proportional. Right? Okay. So you don't have to graph and do the unit rates or the ratios. You just you have to be able to do one or the other. Okay? And you can tell if it's proportional or not based on that. All right, so let's just give a random example where uh, we'll say a water truck is filling a swimming pool. Okay? The equation that represents this is y equals 19.75x, okay? And I'll go ahead and tell you that x is the number of minutes the truck has been filling up the swimming pool. y is the number of gallons that have been filled up, okay? So is this a proportional relationship first off? Yes, it is. We talked about any number times a variable, x, set equal to y, or any variable. Yeah, it's going to be proportional. What makes it not proportional? If we add or subtract some number out here. Okay? If you add or subtract some number out there, it's no longer proportional. All right? But we don't have to worry about that because it is proportional. This is a proportional equation. Okay? So... Let's think about how this works. The number of gallons goes up, and however many minutes it's been going, 
Every minute it goes up, the gallons increase by 19.75. Okay? So, if we did an X and a Y, whenever we're at one minute, Y, the number of gallons, is at 19.75. Whenever we're at two minutes, we've got to take this 19.75 plug in 2 for x, okay, and then we're going to get some number of gallons that it has filled it up, okay. Well, 19.75 times 2, 5 times 2 is 10, 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1 is 15, 2 times 9 is 18, 19, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3, It'd be at 39 gallons, 39 and a half gallons. All right. 39.5 gallons after two minutes. Every minute, every one that X goes up, every one more minute, it fills it up 19.75 gallons every single time. So the unit rate would be 19.75 gallons per minute, okay? Every one minute increased, the gallons go up by 19.75, all right? At the same time, we already know it's proportional, right? So if it's proportional, we can find any number of gallons, okay? So if we do, let's say, five minutes, we can plug in five for x, to find out how many gallons that it would have went up in five minutes. Okay, this is five minutes at this rate, this unit rate per minute. Okay, so we got 19.75 times five, five times five is 25, five times seven is 35, 37, five times nine is 45, plus three is 48, five times one is 5 plus 4 is 9. 98.75 gallons per how many minutes? That'd be per 5 minutes. And that is a proportional relationship. It's still in the same proportion. If you took 98.75 and divided by 5, you're going to come right back to where you started, 19.75, which is how much it goes per minute. Okay? So, it's approximately really close to 100 gallons every five minutes, right? All right. All of these, if we did a table and we kept going forever, it would continue to show equivalent ratios. All the ratios would be equal. It would all reduce back down to 19.75 over 1 every time. Okay? So, let's look at like the point 8. 8 minutes. All right, and let's see, how much would it go up in eight minutes? Well, we got 19.75 gallons times eight minutes. Five times eight is 40. Four, eight times seven is 56. Plus four is 60. Eight times nine is 72. 78 plus six. Eight times one is eight plus seven is 15. 158. So at eight, it's 158 gallons, okay? So that's uh, how you would find any number of minutes. At eight minutes, it's 158 gallons, okay? So the point, that point would be eight, 158, okay? So you could also write that as eight, 158, okay? All right. Hopefully this helped you a little bit understand the proportions and their relationships. Remember on a graph, it's got to go through the origin and it has to be a straight line, okay? That makes it proportional because it's going up at a constant rate. That constant rate, that constant of proportionality is what every single ratio has to reduce down to for it to be proportional, okay? And remember, if you do gallons to minutes for one, you have to do gallons to minutes for every single one. You can't switch it up and go minutes per gallon, gallons per minutes, back and forth, okay? All right, happy Halloween. Don't eat too much candy tonight so that you're sick in class tomorrow. Uh, make sure you turn in this video by tomorrow. It's due tomorrow, remember, all right? Have a good Halloween. 
See ya.